So you thought yesterday was filled with a lot of good news from the Baltimore Ravens. Well, today it gets even better. Let the good news keep on coming. Team, keep it clean so we can start talking about it. Let's jump straight into it. Before we do, make sure you leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button. And y'all went absolutely crazy with it yesterday, which I appreciate so much. Also, subscribe to the channel and turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single update. Now, yesterday we talked about how Kyle Hamilton, the Baltimore Ravens, they dodged a bullet because Kyle Hamilton's injury that he got was not considered to be serious. John Harbaugh said that he should be straight. It was just a minor strain, and he should be back soon. So we're like, okay, that sounds good, but actions speak a whole lot louder than words. So Super Duper Kyle said, watch this. He was back at practice today. <laughs> He was back in practice today already, man. The, the dude missed one day of practice, and he was back the following day. This is why. You done heard me call him Super Duper Kyle so many times. This is one of the reasons why. And you know what's funny? We talked about it in yesterday's video. Remember when he went out during that Rams game, and then he missed uh, one game and then he ended up coming back and he was playing just as good maybe even better than he had been before same thing the dude missed one practice literally one practice and now he's back so shout out to Kyle Hamilton man the best safety not just on the Ravens not just in the AFC North not just in the AFC not just in the NFL but the best safety in the world Shout out to Super Duper Kyle. We love him. And again, the Ravens, they're going to have to pay up some serious money when that time comes. But I'm just, excuse me, we're just glad that Kyle Hamilton is good because he is such a vital part to literally everything the Baltimore Ravens do. He is such a vital part to not only the Baltimore Ravens defense success, but the entire team success because of everything that he brings. But the fact that he is back already that lets us know that he is in tip top shape and he is good to go Kyle we love you my friend oh you thought we were done no, no 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 I told you it's even better than yesterday's was because also yesterday we talked about how Rashad Bateman came back to practice but he wasn't all the way back yet they said he just practiced for a little bit and then he ended up taking the pads and his hell went off and then he was pretty chill for the rest of the day but today they said Rashad Bateman, he was practicing again, but this time he looked more himself. He looked a lot more healthier than he did yesterday. So that's a beautiful thing because, again, there's been talks. There's always going to be talk with Rashad Bateman about the injuries, about everything. So it's so important that he's here and he's healthy. So the fact that he's getting closer to being 100%. That's a beautiful thing. Shout out to Bate. Let's talk some more wide receivers, though. Now, yesterday, there was a lot being made of Lamar Jackson and Nelson Aguilar's interaction because they said that Lamar Jackson was throwing that ball all over the place. He was connecting with all these different receivers on the deep ball and doing his thing. But they said when it came to Nelly yesterday, it was rough because he didn't drop one but two deep touchdown passes. So it had a lot of Ravens fans flipping out. A lot of Ravens fans were like, oh, man, see, this is why that and that is why this but then Nelly said watch this he said my fault Lamar I got you today I'm gonna make it happen today and he did just that because says that Lamar Jackson hit Nelson Aguilar deep when they were doing seven on seven for a 65 yard touchdown pass so it's all forgiven now. Is everything good with Nelly now? Because, again, every receiver is going to have their drops. We talk about that all the time. My thing is, if you're going to drop some, as long as you are making more plays than you're missing, and as long as you catch it when it counts the most, you're good in my book. <laughs> All right, I guess we spoke a little too soon when it came out. God, that was an angle over there. Let's read this report from our guy, Cordell Woodley. He said, today was a really nice practice for Brandon Stevens, who had a few pass breakups. So shout out to Brandon Stevens, who looking like he's ready to continue that consistency from last season. He also said Hamilton, Kyle Hamilton, was a full goal today and was flying around as usual. Can't talk him up enough. He's so good. Yes, yes we, we get it. Yes, that's true. But... <laughs> Nah, hey, the, the play that we talked about earlier, the, the 65 or 67 yard deep pass to Nelson Aguilar, it did happen today, but this also happened. He said, a couple more drops from Aguilar today, 
uh, which isn't good. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> Nelly just getting him out of the way. Just getting him out of the system, man. Get, get, getting him out of the system. He's shaking it off. He's like, hey, I, I, it's better to do it now than in regular season. So cool. And then he also talked about Bateman. He said Bateman did more today, but he still left a little bit early. So again, Bateman, he ramping up. So he's getting closer. Getting closer and closer to being back to normal. He ain't all the way there yet, but he's getting closer to being there. And that's what we need, especially in the next three weeks. And speaking of Lamar Jackson and Nelly, there was also a lot being made of emotion because there were some people on this side that were saying, oh, Lamar Jackson, because he got upset when Nelly was dropping his passes yesterday. And there were people saying, oh, he's acting immature. Why is he getting frustrated like that? Because apparently he got upset. He threw down his helmet. He must have been really, really heated for that. <laughs> Boy, Nelly said Lamar off yesterday. But anyway, um, there were some people that say when it was immature, he shouldn't have done that. And then there were other people saying, oh, yeah, this is leadership right here. It's okay for him to be frustrated. And, and, and that's where I'm at. He gets frustrated. Okay, he got frustrated. It, it seems like Lamar Jackson is wanting things to be crispy, wanting things to be perfect. He wants them to be on point. So we've seen at times when Lamar Jackson gets frustrated with other people. I remember, I think it was Pat Ricard, maybe like a couple years ago. He got frustrated. I forgot what Pat Ricard did, but he had got so mad. And you could see him visibly frustrated on the field with Pat Ricard. But then you've seen other times too. If Lamar Jackson throws a bad pass, if he overthrows somebody, he throws a bad interception, you've seen him get frustrated with himself. Because I've seen people say, oh, man, well, what, what if a player, they ended up getting frustrated at Lamar? Okay. They would get frustrated at him. He, he, it's not like Lamar is somebody that's like, oh, I can dish out my frustration, but I can't take frustration. Because, again, he is his own biggest – he's shown it plenty of times before. So it's not being immature that he got frustrated. He threw his helmet down. He was upset. He, they trying to get this offense right. I – my honest opinion, I, which I always give y'all anyway, but I would much rather that than if Nelly drop a pass and Lamar's like, oh, well, hey, great job. Because, no, that's not a great job. And if Lamar overthrow a pass, then the receiver, if they got on him, okay, that's fine. Do that because, like John Harbaugh loves to say, iron sharpens iron. If y'all just going to be congratulating each other, giving each other high fives, when y'all missing passes, when y'all dropping passes, then that's iron's going to be very dull. Ain't nothing getting sharp with that. But if y'all going to be getting on each other, showing each other frustration, that can bring out the best and make you want to do better again. You see Nelly, he responded the very next day. He said, my fault, Lamar. Oh, what you throwing down your elbow again? My apologies. And he got better. So I got no problem with the frustration being shown. Speaking of wide receivers, the former Baltimore Ravens wide receiver, former first round pick, 2019, our guy Hollywood Brown, uh, we got a more specific update when it came to his injury. Uh, this came from Jordan Schultz. It says, Chiefs wide receiver Marquise Hollywood Brown is expected to miss four to six weeks with the sternoclavicular injury he suffered per multiple sources. Opening night is three weeks from this Thursday night. Oh, my goodness. We are so close. Wow, that... I didn't even realize that. Well, we are like right there, man. We three weeks away from a couple of days. So we 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 what twenty three days away? Oh my goodness, we right there, y'all. We we so cool. <laughs> that, that that made me so happy, man. <laughs> We right there, man. But anyway, it says um, Hollywood Brown expected to miss four to six weeks with the sternoclavicular injury he suffered per multiple sources. Opening night is three weeks from this Thursday. Uh, Kansas City, uh, they open up at home versus Baltimore and then Cincinnati. Ooh, they got a little tough schedule to start out. But um, so it ain't looking like Hollywood is going to be playing in that week one game. Because, again, it said he could miss anywhere from four to six weeks. I did also read that he is doesn't he's not required to have surgery. So that's cool. So it's going to be more of a rehab type of thing. But um, I was definitely looking forward to him being a part uh, of that game in week one. Because I just I wanted obviously versus the Chiefs. That is going to be a huge, huge challenge out the gate. But I wanted the Chiefs, these 2024 Chiefs, 
at their best. And, and actually, no, we wouldn't even be getting them at their best because it's week one. Usually the Chiefs, they struggle for the first couple of weeks and then they catch fire and you know the rest of the story. But I, I did want to see the Chiefs with a Hollywood Brown, um, the Chiefs with an Xavier Worthy, where Rasheed Rice, I, I don't know what's going on with his whole suspension thing. It's looking like he's probably going to be playing in that game. So who knows? Because that whole thing, they done, they done went quiet on that. But anyway, um, but... Even though Hollywood won't be playing in this week one game, well, he's not expected to be playing in this week one game, barring some type of crazy miracle, I would expect to see him later on down the road, if you know what I mean. This next question came from my guy, G-Star. And before we get to this question, I love y'all so much. Seriously, I really do. Um, y'all y'all make this thing so much fun. I appreciate y'all like crazy. I love y'all. I wish I could give each and every one of y'all a big hug because I, I appreciate y'all like crazy, man. Y'all y'all really, I thank you for supporting. I thank you for coming through. I thank you for everything that y'all do uh, for us because y'all y'all make this everything that it is and more. Y'all make this special. Uh, y'all make this so just enjoyable. Y'all just keep being yourselves, man. Keep doing what you've been doing. I love you and I appreciate you like crazy. So let's get into my guy G Star. His question: He said, "Ayuk or Bateman?" I mean, like Ayuk. Maybe by the time you see this video, he'll be a Pittsburgh Steeler. Maybe, but um, depending on how fast we can get it edited and all that good stuff. But it's looking like he's headed there. Like really now, any day now. This thing has been going on forever, and I just, I, I think we're very, very close to the finish line. I hope we're very, very close to the finish line, but. Let's read my guy's question. Even though, I mean, the Baltimore Ravens, they already done answered it for you. It's Bateman. If, if you gotta, if they gotta choose between the two, they already made their decision. But anyway, let's keep going. It says, uh, Engraving, it's been a minute. Yeah, it has been a little while, my friend. It's been a little minute, but I'm glad you back. But he said, uh, with football around the corner, my excitement for the Ravens is steadily growing. Yes. I feel you. We all feel you on that one. He said, I've heard through multiple online sources the 49ers are willing to trade Ayuk if they get a wide receiver in return. My question is, would you trade Ayuk for Bateman, who is on a friendly contract with the knowledge of having to pay Ayuk a high paying contract after or during this season? With the cap growing season to season, we could have a backloaded contract so he gets his money. And not throw the Ravens into a bind. Uh, I, I I wouldn't mind that. It would be a fresh start for both parties. Uh, it would give you a reliable uh, wide receiver, somebody who has some good hands, somebody who can do a lot of work for you, and very very much improve your team uh, from jump, make a big impact on your team from jump. So these this is a lot of stuff that the Steelers are going to be getting when they get Brandon Ayuk uh, any day. Now with Rashad Bateman, the potential is there. Uh, with Rashad Bateman, we just wait him. That's it. We just wait him. We just wait him to see it consistently because we've seen it. We've seen it in bits and pieces, but we haven't got to see it consistently. So, again, with Rashad Bateman, hopefully this is the year. Hopefully this is the year. And this is obviously a hypothetical question. It's just a question to have some fun with. We know the Baltimore Ravens ain't getting a Brandon Ayuk. I certainly wouldn't mind if they did. I know a lot of y'all wouldn't mind if they did either. Uh, but they would have to pay him, which I wouldn't mind if they did that either. You you got to pay for your assets. You got to pay people their value. Hey, it, this, it's business, baby. You got to do it, my friends. So, um, but yeah, it's just one of those things that it's not happening. Now, I know I... Um, a big concern uh, from a lot of people, uh, which is a legitimate concern. Like, man, if the Ravens would have gotten a Brandon Ayuk, we know it's not going to happen. But what would happen with Kyle Hamilton? What would happen with Tyler Linderbaum? They could work that stuff out. They could work it out. I know, yeah, hey, and there's some big money contracts all the way, but you if you can find a way to make it all happen. You really could. But anyway, continuing, he also said, also, if King Henry balls out this year, do we resign him as well? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a real good question because Derrick Henry, he's on a two-year contract, but it's really a, a one-year contract because all the guarantees are this year. They could cut him after this year and psh, say bye. See ya. But I think um, everything just depends on how he does. The expectation is that he does well because, again, he has been doing very well on a much worse team. 
Um, so now with him being with the Baltimore Ravens, I feel like his job should be a lot easier. And like he mentioned, like we've mentioned a lot of times, he won't be the focal point. So that should make things a lot smoother for Derrick Henry. Um, but I think everything just depends on how he does, how he's looking, especially toward the end of the season. Is it looking like, oh, hey, Derrick Henry, this dude rejuvenated? Or is it looking like, oh, you might be slowing down a little bit there, Sonny? So it, it all just depends on that. He said, many thanks to you for giving us great content. Can't wait for the live coverage of the games. Uh, I hope you and the family stay well so you don't have to get well. Your friend G-Star. Man, I, I love that. I, I appreciate that a lot, man. So the Baltimore Ravens, they signed running back John Kelly, who spent some time with the Rams and the Browns. Hasn't really gotten many carries over his career. Uh, he's had... 32 total carries for 96 yards uh, in his career. So um, I I'm thinking what I'm thinking this signing is about uh, is for Rasheen Ali because he's missed the last couple of days of practice and maybe they want to spread out the reps for the running backs that much more uh, to put less wear and tear on the guys that are healthy. So they brought in John Kelly to sort of be there while Rasheen Ali is out now that's just what I think that's my opinion I ain't heard nothing I don't know anything no plugs no sources no connects but that's what I would assume even though list season is over list season like really really never stops but PFF they compiled a list of the highest grade first round rookies from preseason week one who y'all think was at the top of that list well I mean you ain't even gotta guess no more oh boy Nate Wiggins was at the top uh, with that 89.2 grade over Grand Bar and over Jaden Daniels over J.J. McCarthy. Hope he gets well soon and he could get that meniscus right pretty quickly. Uh, Tyler Guyton and Quinion Mitchell. So very, very good, Nate Wiggins. We know he's still out for now, but we're looking forward to him in that week one matchup because he should be good to go forward.